Before we start, don't forget to share, like and subscribe for great new content. When it comes to film locations, New Zealand is well known for Peter Jackson's Middle Earth films, but with some significant tax breaks, world leading effects company Weta and some truly unique and diverse locations, you may be surprised by some of the different productions that are made here. Today's list, 5 films you might not realise were made in New Zealand. When looking for a cone-shaped snow-capped volcano, there's only two options, Mount Fuji in Japan and Mount Taranaki, which is why Taranaki was used as a stand-in for pre-industrialized Japan in this Tom Cruise film that also introduced Ken Watanabe to the English-speaking world. Farmland around the mountain was transformed into imperial Japanese villages, and the entire production pumped over $50 million into the regional economy and spurned the colloquial term Samurai Summer to describe summers of long, clear days. After blowing up the White House and unlocking the Stargate, but before flooding the world and saving John Cusack, director Roland Emmerich made 10,000 BC. Set at a historically ambiguous time, the film follows villager Delaire as he tries to save his village from slavery and pyramid building. Shot in Southland, Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadwalt actually got involved in a car crash on his way to pitch his region as the film's location. Mostly known today for introducing and wasting Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool, the first X-Men spin-off film shot a large chunk in Queenstown. This actually caused a number of issues, including sets needed to be dismantled due to weather conditions, and risks to local ecologies when explosives were stored next to an ice skating rink. Unfortunately, these issues were just a small part of a troubled production that included constant rewrites, feuding producers, and actors' attitudes. Starring Bryce Dallas Howard and Robert Redford, this reimagining of the beloved Disney film was shot in the central Otago town of Tapa Nui because of what the director called a timeless look that suited the 1978 and 1983 periods that the film is set in. As a thank you to the town, the filmmakers organised two special advance screenings for the people of Tapa Nui and dedicated a plaque thanking the town for helping people bring the dragon to life. When you think of fantasy films in New Zealand, there's one really obvious list topper, but the other big fantasy series from the early 2000s that wasn't about a boy wizard was also shot in New Zealand. The Chronicles of Narnia was helmed by one of the most successful Kiwi filmmakers you've never heard of, Andrew Adamson, who also directed Shrek. Shot chronologically, this film took a lot to get to the big screen. The estate of C.S. Lewis weren't keen initially, there were several writers approached, more directors considered, and a lengthy casting process, as well as issues with aging child actors and a run-in with the government over bringing into New Zealand reindeer and wolves. 